Alright guys, this is the November 30 PTR notes. The last patch was two months ago. It's been a super long season. I think the season started in like May. So like the longest hot rank season ever. And here's a new patch. No new hero. Feels bad, man. But some changes we'll go through. So first of all, building changes. Healing wells are not vulnerable, so it's like ARAM. So now you can't snipe the wells, which I think is good because it was a pretty cheesy strat. You kind of just had to hope the enemy team had honor. Because <laughs> sniping these was definitely a good play, but also kind of like a... You know, it was just like a cheesy move, so I'm glad I did this. It's like, it's just kind of dumb. And then... Forts and keeps being healthier, I think what that's going to mean is games will end up being longer because the game, like the map will take longer to break open. So I think the like, games already take pretty long, especially in higher levels where it's harder to snowball than it used to be because of the XP changes, especially the forts not giving. Because before you used to just get a big chunk of XP with every fort. So you used to have like pretty sizable talent tier leads where you could, uh, you know, like, snowball your lead. and But now it's so much harder to snowball. So I think this is going to make it even harder. I mean, it's only 2k, 3k HP. So kind of hard to judge what that means. But maybe average game time will go up, like, 10 seconds or something, 20 seconds. Maybe in competitive even more. Because the buildings are how you win the game. Forts and keep increased by same HP as fountains. Yeah, I see that. I see that. So you have to kill. It's just like you have to kill the tap anyways, but in the fort and keep itself. And then, oh, one sec. Okay. Okay, sorry. Ganked my cat. Okay, this is a big one. The Rhaegar rework. This is the one everyone's talking about. I didn't really read it, so let me read it closer, and then let me pull up what Rhaegar currently does. Or I want to pull up a patch history, and then let's see, like, what he currently does. I just want to compare it one-to-one, -one, sort of. Okay, so attack damage increased by 9. Doesn't really matter. Attack speed reduced. So he's actually going to have less DPS because of that. Uh... Maybe it matters a little bit on camps. Each enemy hit by lightning show starts two mana to Rhaegar, mana cost reduced. Okay, so that used to be a talent, right? Level four. So this will give you four. So it's half of what the talent gave. That was a meta talent. And then the cost of the mana. So that's really good. Because Rhaegar had a little bit of mana issues. Uh, I mean, this talent helped it a lot, but having that baseline is going to help a ton. So you probably don't even have to go any mana talents if there are any. And then totem increase health by 100, that's a lot. It's like 33%. Or no, that's like 50% increase. That's pretty big. Okay, and then this is a big one everyone's talking about. 0.5 second cleanse. So usually cleanse is one second. But 0.5 is still decent. Or it's like still good because it's unstoppable. Which is like the important thing because some of the other cleanse is just silences or roots. And you, you can only use them reactively. You can only use them after the CC. This one you can still use it before. And then, or it's an 80% slow for two seconds. That's pretty insane, actually. 80% point and click slow. That's basically it. And that's ranged. I want to see what the range on this is. If it's actually cleanse range, that's insane. Like, you, I think you would only use that aggressively, or you'd mainly use that aggressively. That's really, really OP, actually. Like, for ganking and stuff. Okay. Next, Stormcaller. So this was a mana one. And then increases radius. I think that used to be a different one, right? Which one increased the radius? I swear there was one. Okay, so the level 1 was 25%. So, okay, so combine the 1 and 4, or at least the radius part of the 1, and then you get... Up to 300 stacks, up to 600 HP. Uh, I don't think this one's going to be good. But let's see what it's competing. Level 1. Okay, the radius is good overall, especially if you're going the full W build. The 600 HP doesn't seem like that great at full stacks. 
Let's see what the rest is. Grounded totem no longer grants additional health. How much did it give before? A hundred percent. Okay, so you basically get half of this for free. All right. And then because of the the buff to the baseline. And then additional functionality, spell power reduced by 25%. Mm, I guess it's like pretty good because a lot of times it's hard for you to kill the totem in the middle of the team fight, especially if it's longer or if it's more HP. This one might be decent. I'll have to see what it feels like, but this seems like the best choice. And this one, entering guarantee armor. I mean, it's make you a bit safer. Wolf run as well. Get the old wolf run, kind of. 40% for a second. Uh, looking at these, I think these two seem better than the armor one. Um, I think the totem one actually looks pretty solid. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. I, if I picked Rhaegar right now, I'd definitely try this one first. Because I probably got all the W talents to see how the full W build felt. Okay, Earth Living Enchant. I always thought the sound was kind of underrated. Uh, and I mean, the biggest problem was it competed with Earthshield and Tidal Waves. But this one, I think it was always like decent. It was just like, the other two were just better. So I'm glad they moved it to less competitive tier. Level 4, and they increased the healing a little bit. That's decent. And then, so that, that'll like increase your healing numbers a lot. Electric Charge, though, that's the W. That's the big one I want to see. Moved from level 1. Wait a sec, okay. So this was the Radius Heal. So this is 20% of damage dealt. Oh, that's interesting. So if you throw this on like a hyper carry, heals, oh my gosh. Dude, you throw that on your Vala or like your Illidan or something? Wait a sec. And you get movement speed? Okay, this talent looks super busted. I take this 10 out of 10 times actually. This talent seems insane. You just throw this on your gray main, Illidan, like Vala. Okay, let's see the E talent though. Healing totem health increase. Nah. Healing totem was always decent, but now that it's competing with this. Damage up by Rhaegar W, not the carry spells. Oh, wait a sec. Okay, so it's just like it was before. Okay, wait a sec. I trolled that. It was 30% before. Oh, okay. So it's like. Okay, actually, not as insane as I thought. The movement speed still seems kind of insane, though. You can just give your carry 10% speed. Hmm. What other healers give people speed buffs? Surely there's other healers that do that, right? Let me think about that. Brightwing E? What is, how much does Brightwing E get? For how long? How much and how long? 20% for three seconds. How long does lightning shield last? Five seconds? Hmm, okay, I think I'm already changing my mind. I'm kind of feeling earth living now. I don't know, maybe it's full W though. Cause the healing is still like pretty decent on a melee. Maybe you still go full W. Either I'm going Totem Earth Living right now, or I'm going Stormcaller Electric. I don't think I'm going Healing Totem. Okay, then Cleanse is removed. Colossal Totem, move from level 1, no longer gives it range, but it gives you range on the other talent, it gives you 50%. Okay, so they made this baseline. And then the reactivation part is what you're getting. Um, no, I don't think this is good. I don't think you ever, oh, actually, how much? Yeah, no, because you already get the area. Or you already get the range. Oh, but this one gives you the area, huh? Okay, wait, yeah, no, this is decent, actually. This one, this is the old 16? No, kind of. Part of the old 16 with the with the seven nerfs. No, I wouldn't take this. Oh, this is a buff to the baseline cleanse. Removing a slow heals them and refunds 50% of the cooldown. Wait a sec. What is the cooldown baseline? Oh my 
It's 30 seconds baseline. You can make it 15 on a cleanse. Wait a sec. And it, or it has healing reduction. Oh, wait a sec. I think I'm going this one. I think I'm going purification every time, actually. This one seems insane. I'm definitely going purification. Okay, tens are unchanged. Actually, let me queue up because I think the other game's ending soonish. I don't want to miss. Okay. 13 tidal waves buffed. It used to be one second a really long time ago. I remember they nerfed it. If I remember correctly, yeah. They nerfed it way back in the HCC era. It was, uh... Point, it was, used to be one, I remember. Yeah, so the, this is a revert from three years ago. And then a bit more mana. Uh, I don't think you have, you'll have that much mana problems if you if you have W at... Or the just the baseline W itself. But maybe it's relevant. But I think Earth Shield. I don't know. Both of these seem really insane, actually. Every two seconds, Totem will cast an untalented chain heal at a nearby ally that heals for 40%. Ooh. That seems pretty good, too. They all seem good, actually. I think I'd probably default to. Actually, I think I'd default to Tidal Waves, surprisingly. Or maybe Earth Shield. One of these two. The beautiful thing about Earth Shield is it helps you get your Ancestral off. Which is pretty important because a lot of times the p person dies before you can finish ancestral healing at cast time, and the W keeps them alive for that extra, like second or half a second or whatever. And then especially if you're going like the radius and all the W times, you probably just go W. But like for sustain healing, it gets a lot of poke. The tidal waves plus Earth Living Enchant, the Q here and the Q here will actually heal a lot. And shouldn't cost you too much mana. So, and then the the E, I don't know. I have to try this out, but I think the E talents seem more. They seem like a bait to me, compared to the W talents. We'll have to see though. We'll have to see. I need to try this out. I think we're gonna be playing some PTR tomorrow, so I'm gonna try to play some Rhaegar for sure. Okay. Finally, 16. Rising Storm no longer grants Rhaegar untalented Lightning Shield. Increase duration of Lightning Shield by 3 seconds. Okay, so this used to give you Lightning Bond. Now you don't get Lightning Bond. Instead, you just get... You still get the damage, though. Yeah, so if you have the Hyper Carry, like the Illidan or the Sonya or even the Leoric or Blaze, I'm pretty sure the way you should play Rhaegar... But just looking at this, you just take all the W talents and you just throw it onto your bruiser in every fight. Especially because bruisers are so strong right now. I think this is a talent you take 10 out of 10 games. Earthcrasp is really good, but I think I'm always going Rising Storm. Duration plus damage bonus. And then finally... No more rewind, no more storm shield. Activate to gain lightning shield and grant all nearby allies a shield for 10% of their maximum health. So this is storm shield redefined. But storm shield is 20%. Each time this lightning shield hits an enemy hero, grant nearby ally, but it's your lightning shield. No, I don't like this one at all. I don't like this one at all. Gain 10% factor and 5 spell power for yourself and each nearby ally hero, stacking up to 5 times. Okay, so if you're 5v5ing... Oh, wow. You're giving everyone 50% attack damage? Am I reading this right? If everyone's together, you're, you're giving everyone 50%? What if you have Vikings, bro? Or Samuro? Are you just giving your whole team 80%... Attack damage? Think it's just for you? It says yourself and each nearby ally hero, or you only gain it yourself for each. I feel like they would have worded that different. We'll have to see what this one looks like. But I'm not too convinced about this one, and I think an increased ulti is, should seem better, unless this is what I think it is. 
Yo, what up, Arthur Stark? How's it going? We're doing a patch rundown. I think I'm gonna upload this to YouTube. Although, I'm still on the first hero. It's been 15 minutes, so... It's kind of a yikes. Um, I don't know. I'm probably still up, uh, upgrading my ancestral ulti. Unless this one's as insane as I think. We'll have to test this one out. And then, purge cooldown refreshing faster. Pretty nice, but I don't think it's that relevant because it's already such a low cooldown. Probably not using it that much in the late game. Post 20, you're probably only using it once, maybe twice to fight. Uh, with the level 7, it seems pretty good. Okay, Ariel, Sacred Sweep, Cast Time, Increase. This is really nice. The the speed, because Swift Sweep, I used to think Swift Sweep was mandatory. I used to take it all the time, because the cast time is so long without it. Yeah, so it's Swift Sweep Baseline. But it looks like you get stunned, a little mini stun at the end of it. Finish time, I don't know what that means, but that's what I'm thinking that means. That's pretty nice though, Swift Sweep Baseline. So now you can afford to take like one of these. I think Searing Light is a standard talent. That's pretty nice. I used to take Swift Sweep every game when I played Ariel. Additional functionality increased stun duration by 0.25 seconds. Wait. Wait a second. That's pretty nice. Because the stun is already pretty... The stun is already pretty long. That's a 1.5 second stun. And they're slowed after? For 5 seconds? Am I reading that right? Dang. That seems really good. I usually take the quest, but uh, 2.5 seconds on no, 1.5 seconds so with the new talent. 1.5 second. I think I'm taking this one for sure. I'm gonna try it out at least. And then 16, Will of Heaven. This was like the worst one at this tier. So it buffs you up a little bit. I don't think that's going to matter. Your attack damage doesn't really matter. Even with Energized Cord. Probably give you some more energy, but I think Spell Power is usually just better. And then Wrath of Heaven, is that the Spell Power one? This was usually the better one. That or just the big heal. Or the, the questing heal. Hmm... Spell armor reduce. That seems like actually kind of decent. Uh, not really the biggest changes. Oh, also I didn't get my cut. So I think Rhaegar is gonna be a lot better. I think he'll definitely be like picked a decent amount. Uh, I'll probably right now just looking at this. I think I'd put him in A tier, but we'll have to see how it feels. I'll probably put him A tier or B tier. I don't think I'm putting him S for that because the healers are so insane. And then Ariel, I don't think Ariel will be much better, but she'll feel better whenever you want to pick her for whatever reason, like double support or hyper carry. So I think I'd have her in C tier, just reading this. She seems like C tier to me. But yeah, I'm going to have to test it all out. This is just my random first impression. And then Bradley, okay, this is the S tier healer. I'm glad they're nerfing an S tier healer. Nerfing the level 1 talent, that's good. They already nerfed this one before, so it's good they're nerfing it again. Before they nerfed it by, uh, did they nerf it? My trolling. What is it called? Hyper shift. They nerfed the cooldown reduction on it. That's what they did. Oh no, yeah, they nerfed. Okay, this was. Oh, this was a year ago. It was ten percent. Now it's all the way down to six percent. Pretty good nerfs. And then magic spit. This is the one they buffed before. They buffed that one a year ago as well, a year and a half ago, from five to six. Now it's that, from six down to four. So each auto attack is four. So you're autoing 10 times, that's 20 seconds gone. That's pretty decent nerf. And then Invisible Friend, infinite to nine seconds. Nine seconds is still super long. I think the OP part about this one is not the infinite cells, even though you can do some cheesy plays with like hiding your tank in the back line or whatever, or hiding the tank in the middle of the map somewhere, which you can't do that anymore, which is good. Look that cheese. But I think the really OP part of this was like, they get those iframes for like half a second. 
where you can't target them, like it, they're unrevealable. I think that's what makes this talent so OP, is like the little unrevealable part. So I think Brightwing will still, I have her in S tier. I think she'll probably still be S tier, maybe down to A tier, but I think probably still S tier. I don't think these nerfs are big enough. I think uh, Polymorph cooldown or what else do I think Brightwing could be nerfed with? I think Polymorph cooldown is a bigger thing or Polymorph duration. I think the polymorph is the biggest issue with Brightwing to me. Um, so yeah, I think I'd still put her in S tier. Maybe A tier. And Dahaka, okay, Dahaka, another S tier hero. I think he's the best bruiser in the game, so I'm glad they're nerfing him. Even though he is one of my best heroes. Uh, sacrifices must be made. Okay, so 100 HP. Actually, let's look at what buffs they gave him, because they just buffed him, and now they're nerfing him. So... Let's see, they buffed them a couple of times. They buffed them last year. They buffed them again last year. Uh, okay, so HP, what is that? HP by only 50, that's not too much. Attack damage by five, again, not too much. Oh, this is like, I guess it's like 5%. And then the E talent at four, everyone was taking this one. Personally, I still think Hero Soccer is insane. And then the cooldown reduction on Feeding Frenzy, this is really important that they nerfed this because they gave him too much attack speed. So I think that's good. I think he'll still be S tier, just looking at this. I don't think this is enough to kick him down from S tier. Maybe A tier, but I think still S tier to me. Q, yeah, I'm in Q, don't worry. And then false Falstad, uh, Tailwind cooldown reduced. Wait, this is a buff. Am I reading this correctly? Your trade is up more often now? Falstad is A tier on my tier list, but I think in competitive, he's S tier. And maybe one of the best heroes in the game in competitive. Maybe the best. Like, extremely strong. So I expected him to get nerfed. That's kind of weird that they buffed him. And depth of W build, that's good. W build was really, really horrible. Um, only by 0.25% per stack, though. I think it's still going to be bad. And then, yeah, they're just buffing the trait. I think that's kind of insane. Especially once you get Flowrider Airy Gust. I don't know why they're, but they should definitely be nerfing him. But maybe his win rate's low in, like, lower ranks. I like his people are taking W build. <laughs> Q build's really OP, by the way. Always go Q build on false set. Q build's insane. Um, yeah, kind of weird. So, maybe he goes up to S tier. Probably still A tier. Maybe he goes up to S. Imperius buff. I think I have Imperius in my B or C. I think in my B. Q, final damage by 10. Doesn't really matter. W talent that no one takes. Doesn't really matter because the cleave is still really OP. Uh, yeah. Cleave is still OP. This completely irrelevant changes. He stays the same. Uh, Jaina. Ooh, I swapped sooner. Dang it. If Pyrat had that last game, we would have won, actually. And then Winter's Reach, Missile Speed. That's good. This talent, pretty underpicked compared to the Globe and Lingering Chill. I don't think I'll take this talent just because you need the Globes because she has too many mana issues. So I don't think my build changes. I don't think the hero changes. Probably still. What do I have for C tier? Actually, I should pull up my tiers because I'm just like guessing right now. I don't know why I didn't do that sooner. Let's, uh, I think I have her, let's see. Yeah, I have her C tier, she stays in C tier. She doesn't move. Imperius was B tier, he doesn't move. Johanna buff, three seconds on, on trait. They buff the HP, the, what is this? What do they call it? The gambit. So the blocks work on any target. So it works on minions and stuff, which is these, and you get more. But double blind is two OP and globes are two OP, so still not taking this talent. Even against if you're against a full melee like auto attack team, you just go double blind. And if you're against like a Meiji Pokey team, you just go the globes. So I think you still go that. Um oh nice. Your blind does more damage with double blind. That's nice. Yeah, double blind I think is generally her best level one. Cause double blind is just it's just really, really strong. We're always having a blind up. So I probably take double blind 70% of the time and then globes 30% of the time. 
And I don't think I ever take this one. Although it is nice to buff it. Then hold your ground, cooldown reduction, reduce. Oh wow, they nerfed hold your ground. Interesting, interesting. I usually go the uh, Q talent. I know hold your ground's decent, like especially if they have a ton of damage, but surprised they nerfed that that heavily. That's kind of wild. Because this sound is like definitely better. The subdue. So I'm still going subdue. Oh, they nerfs or they buff since exposed. That's nice. Oh, this is pretty big. An extra second on your trait from Steve Charge. So now you get two seconds. That's uh, that's pretty good. I don't think I'm taking this. I think I'm still going since exposed. I think I'm still going Q four Q seven. It's not a nerf, it's just not buff. Well, that's a nerf because they, yeah, they buff the baseline. But why would I take it then? If it doesn't give me anything. Definitely not taking this. Definitely going Q47. Alright. Moving on. Oh my. They buffed this Q too. Wait, that's so crazy. They buffing Q. Q is our best talent. They buffed the other Q as well. Okay, well, still going Q here too. That's huge. And even more damage. It's actually pretty good. Baseline trait. Double blind buff. They buffed all her best talents, actually. They buffed her best one, her best seven, and her best 13. Oh, they nerfed the 20 falling. That's good. 20 falling was too insane. Probably still too overpowered, but I'm glad they brought it down a little bit. Um, Joe probably, probably stays in B. I don't think she moves up to A for that, but definitely considering it after that one. Okay, moving on. Junkrat, oh, this is a big one. I think this is probably the biggest change so far. Big Trap from 7 to 13, that's huge because Double Trap is the 13 tier. And the meta Junkrat, the thing that made him S tier was a double trap build where you can't eat the traps. You can't like uh, force the trap into a minion wave because the big trap that doesn't hit minions or shrine minions or anything, plus the double trap was too oppressive. So now you have to go back to silence traps or you only get one big trap, which is super, super nice. I think this is a huge, huge nerf. I still think he's gonna be really strong. Probably, i have moved him down to A tier, maybe even down to B tier. Like, I think double trap build was that insane. He's either A tier or B tier now. Uh, definitely a big nerf. 20, reduced book, this doesn't matter. Always go cannonball or upgraded riptire. But huge, huge nerf. Very happy with that. And then Lunara nerf. Lunara, really, really OP. I have her in A. She should be S, actually. I haven't updated this in a few days, or like in a few weeks. Still mostly relevant, but she should be S, for sure. Um, especially because of this talent. Back down to 175%. I think that's what they buffed last time, right? No, they buffed it from 150, so kind of an in-between nerf. And then the poison got nerfed a bit as well. Now I think the big thing they have to do is address the 13 cleanse. I think that one should be nerfed pretty hard or maybe even removed. And then I think the level one wisp also deserves a nerf. But I'm glad they nerfed her a little bit. Probably still A tier. I'll probably keep her there. Cause yeah, like I said, she should have been S, but I'll keep her in A now. And then, oh, Probius. Okay, I gotta read what Probius said. So Probius is one of my only F tier heroes. I've been saying for years. I've been saying since the day he came out that they need buff, they need to buff him. But I don't think they ever did. Or if they did, it wasn't very significant. They just kind of pretend like he didn't exist. Oh, wait, they did. Let's see, when did they release him? Actually, they changed it more than I thought. Okay, so... I don't know what this hero does really. This is a lot of changes. Let's let's read let's let's work on this. Let's <sighs> take a deep breath for that one. 
start studying up on my Probius talents. Okay, so your W used to be nine seconds. Now it's only three. Ooh, explodes on expiration though. That's big. Cause hitting the little Q on it was pretty annoying. But the nine seconds of zoning was pretty nice. Uh, probably still a good thing though, because yeah, like having explode on expiration, that's big. So you don't have to queue it every single time. Photon cannon attack period reduced from one to one point four. Attack period. I don't even know what that means. And I don't know why it's reduced when the number goes up. My brain is already malfunctioning. No longer requires pylons. Oh, you don't need to D before you E. That is big. Oh, and it gains attack speed when it's in the pylon. And it prepares here. Oh my god, this is actually pretty nice change. I like this turret change. Okay, wait a sec. Press reward no longer reveals. That's kind of toxic. They they nerfed a talent. I can't believe they nerfed anything about this hero. Now does a hundred percent damage on the way back. It's like attack speed. Yeah. Why does the number go? You know what? I'm not even gonna. Ask. Oh, like every one second it attacks. Now it attacks every one point four seconds. Is that what you're telling me? I don't know. Who knows? Um, what were we saying? Something about Probius. After hitting four heroes with Disruption Pulse, the next Warp Rift detonated by Disruption Pulse. That's a Q, right? Okay. So you hit four Qs, the next one does... Oh, that's cute. And you get cooldown reduction? That is pretty good, actually. Exploding a warp rift within one second and deals 90 damage. Nah. I think I'll take... I don't know. Hitting four people with Qs, though? Do you really ever do that? Because you're queuing your Ws all the time, right? Pylon overcharge duration reduced. Can only target heroes. Ooh. Ooh, invulnerable? Wait a sec. That's pretty insane. Because that ult actually does a lot of damage. Usually I instantly kill the pylon when I'm in this hole. Wait, that's big. That's big. Disruption pulse deals 2.5% as damage and another cooldown reduction? Wait a sec. How much cooldown reduction are you getting on this bad boy? It's only three seconds. I think I'm going Q build on probe. I think I'm taking echo pulse I'm taking Particle Accelerator, and I'm playing for 20 Q, baby. Let's go. Let's pick me Probius right now. No, just kidding. Probably still F. Maybe D tier, actually. Maybe mix a cameo in D tier. I'm excited to try. I'm trying him in PTR tomorrow for sure. That sounds like a lot of fun. Ooh, Rainer buffs. That's big. Ace in the Hole back to 12%. I can't count how many times they've changed Ace in the Hole. Let's count. Okay, so this is where they reverted the functionality change because they like change how it worked. And this is where, yeah, so this is a functionality change. And then from 15 to 10%, I was in 2020. And then, okay, this is where they gave it the slow. 20 to 15%, I was in 2018. So back when Rainer was meta in the HCC days, He's definitely still a lot weaker because Ace used to be 20 when he first came out. When he, or when he first got reworked. Actually, it used to be 30. So we're all the way down to 12. I'd like to, I'd like a 15 on that bad boy. Maybe they're... I don't know why they're... Why they're being so conservative over here. Should have thrown a 15 on that bad boy. Heavy slugs. That's a slow at 7. The Q slow. I think uh, probably still won't be meta... Another 0.5 seconds. The duration is already super long. I think uh, giving up unstable though is pretty bad. Also giving up fuel to rush if you're going that build. But um, I think for the auto build, unstable is still going to be the best. For auto or Q build. And then 20 plane and 20 cavalry buffed. 2.5 to 6. No. 
Ah. Uh, actually, six seconds. No, no, no. Still bad. Still bad. Still bad. Still bad. Twenty plane though. Wait. From two point five to three, it says it's two though. Is it uh? Is the tooltip not up to date, or did they just scroll here? Probably the tooltip's not up to date. Uh, then maximum armor to thirty. Yeah, upgraded plane's pretty strong. I usually go. Uh, Sergeant Pepper, but I think upgraded plane is also pretty really like pretty solid So but I don't think this is enough. I think he needs more buffs than that Probably still D tier. I can't see him going up. Maybe C No, probably still D And then Stukov. Okay, so Stukov is another one of my S tiers But barely got touched 15 HP 15 trait I think still solidly S tier. Definitely not enough of a nerf. And then, okay, Taronda, who's been getting played a lot recently in Storm League and has a really high win rate. So let's look at her. E, oh wait, let me pull her up. So usually a meta build is full W with the loons. They're buffing the E maximum bonus to 150, so you still need to do 10 more quests, but it isn't capped anymore. Do people actually finish this? Do people actually hit 20 stuns in a game? I can't say because I've never taken this guy. I always take Owl. Might be decent if you have like a really strong stun, stun combo and you're hitting every stun. Because 150% bonus damage? In the late game, like your stun chunks super hard. But I can't see myself giving up Owl or even True Shot because True Shot's really strong because it gives you that uh, reset as well. Oh, and they buffed it a tiny bit. Right, let's see what the other Owl nerfs are. Mark of Mending. Oh, this is super good. Allies near the attack target, not near Toronto. That's nice. I still think Illumins is way better. I don't think I'm ever taking this, but that's a nice little buff. Okay, Shrink Ray by one second, but they didn't nerf the numbers of the Shrink Ray, which I think is what made it so OP. It was a 35% Shrink Ray, I think it was really strong. But it is one second less, which will make it a little bit weaker, but I think this is still the meta build. 1% less on this two. I think I'm still taking Owl build every game. Yeah, I'm not changing my build. And I don't think I'm changing. I think she's still B tier. It's not enough of a nerf. And then, oh wait, let's look at... They buffed the Shadow Sock and the Starfall. That's nice. I think both these upgrades are good. I think all her 20s are really good. Actually, I think every single one of her 20s is pickable. The range, the attack speed, and both upgraded ults. So if you ever feel like upgrading your ult, this will be a nice little buff. Um, but yeah, definitely keeping her the same. Together with Strong Buff, I think that's good. I, I actually like this on a lot. This is my go-to. Unless I'm playing, uh, Globe at one, I think this talent's really good. This is a ni nice buff. It's really good with Vala, Zul'jin, like any hyper carry. Gives you a lot of energy. And then Deep Burn, this one's pretty horrible. Should always go this slow. Um, the Q slow damage, whatever, the Q damage. Uh, where is Zarya? C tier. She says C tier. She says C tier. And then, okay, some bug fixes. They fixed the Q, Lunara 16. Resolved the issues. That's kind of vague. Don't know what the issues were. Maybe people were going through the blocks. I don't know. Corrected death deal damage bonus. I don't know what, uh... I don't know what the what the nerf was, or what the bug was, but I'm glad it's corrected. Glad this is corrected. And not very specific, but I'm sure uh, none of this stuff changes anything about the actual meta or like the tiers. So okay, longest patch review ever. That's 40 minutes. I know no one watched all of this. I'm sorry for taking so long, but. If it makes you feel better, I've been in queue this whole time. <laughs> and, uh... 
I guess we can do some... Okay, I'm gonna... Let me stop the recording. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm gonna update my tier list now. Um, because there are some changes I want to make. But maybe that'll be another video.